Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Detective Aaron, and today we're going to be playing Disco Elysium, the final cut. You might notice something different about this video. I am dressed as a boy band member. <laughs> I'm supposed to be a detective, okay, and this hat is supposed to add to the illusion, but I'm not really feeling it. I, I just think I look like Michael Jackson. I don't know. This is my dad's hat and my dad's tie. He tied it for me because I don't know how to tie ties, but I thought I'd get into character today because we have a very special Let's Play episode that I'm very, very excited for. So... <laughs> Let me just take this off real quick. So yes, like I said, we're going to be playing Disco Elysium, the final cut. I really hope that's how you say it. And this episode is very, very special because the developers actually reached out to me and they offered to send out an early review code for this game. And I'm so excited because that's never happened to me before. So I guess technically this is a review. Kinda? It's basically just gonna be a first look into this game because I'm not sure how it's gonna fit into my channel, but I am very, very excited to check it out and see what I think. And if I like it enough, or if you guys like it enough, I plan on continuing it on the channel. Obviously, I have a bunch of other series that I need to get to, so I'm not sure when the continuation will be, but I'm probably just gonna play for like an hour and a half today and see how I like it, and we will see. So a little more about this game. I know that this game was actually released a while ago, I'm not sure when, but this is a newer version, um, the final cut, because it is now fully voice acted. And I guess it wasn't voice acted previously, and I looked at it and apparently over like a million lines of dialogue was recorded, and that is insane. So in this game, I believe you play as a detective and you're trying to solve a murder mystery in this dystopian looking world. It looks super interesting and very like story based character driven i'm very much interested in that uh, i'm guessing there's gonna be multiple endings or something to that extent i believe there's like multiple choices and you can kind of choose how you want to be a detective hence the lady <laughs> should i keep on the hat i don't know i've never worn a hat in my videos um... I don't know. Like I said, I'm very excited to get into it. I'm definitely going to give my thoughts at the end of this episode as sort of like a review slash let's play. I'm not sure exactly how to format this because like I said, I've never really done this before. Like I said, I'm very much looking forward to it. So let's not waste more time and let's get into Disco Elysium, the final cut. All right, so this menu is gorgeous, by the way. I think I'd like to mention first how beautiful the watercolor look is in this game. Like, the scenery just looks so good. And we haven't even gotten to the game yet. Anyway, I just wanted to say that before we got into it. But first off, I'd of course like to give a huge thank you to the developers of this game for even thinking of me and reaching out and offering to send me this game. And it's just honestly crazy because I never thought that happened to me. Some very, very cool people over there that I spoke to. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for keeping me in the loop with everything and answering all my questions very professionally and fast, especially. So yeah, I just wanted to give that thank you to them before we started because this is very exciting. Okay. Whoa, okay. Oh. Create your own character. Okay, okay. This is really cool. Select archetype. So we can be... Any kind of dude can be a thinker, extremely intelligent, very bad with people, knows interesting facts, comes up with original ideas. Hold on. The text is kind of small, isn't it? Oh god. That didn't really help any. <laughs> Excuse me. Sensitive, very psychological, a magnetic, a magnetic personality, but unstable, might begin to lose his mind. Physical, extremely physical, interacts with the world through his body. Gets things done, but dumb as a rock. <laughs> okay, so it shows their stats, I believe, down here. Um, I'm not sure what those stand for. I kind of want to see what Create Your Own is. Oh, okay. Okay. I see. So, we can adjust our abilities here. We have different points that we can use here. Um, instead of going with like a, a preset. Let's look. I think I might want to go with create your own. Is it the same guy? 
That art is gorgeous. I want to know who the artist is because that looks so cool. No, no, shit. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I went with think art. No, let's go back. <laughs> okay, let's go with create your own because I clicked on the wrong thing. Okay. Okay, so adjustabilities. Okay, let's move all these down to one so I have points. <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> okay, intellect, ra ra <laughs> raw brain power, how smart you are. Psych, sensitivity, how emotionally intelligent you are, how musculature, your musculature, how strong you are, your sense, how agile you are agile you are. I can't speak. So I'd like to be a sensitive guy, but apparently I have um, the risk of losing my mind or something, so. Genius. Let's go with good. Um, and I'm very smart. Okay. So... <laughs> I don't want to be very strong. I want to use my brain, because that's what detectives do, right? They use their brain power. So I'm very emotionally intelligent, or I'm good. Um, I have average raw brain power. <laughs> I'm pretty weak, and I'm average with um, my motor skills. So I think that's good. Sure. Whoa, set skill. Oh my god, this art is so cool. Um, wow, we have a lot to look through here. Whoa, that's tiny text. Logic urges you to analyze the living daylights out of the case. It enables you to piece evidence together, detect inconsistencies in statements, and impress everyone with your astonishing conclusions. It's the bread and butter of many a detective. At high levels, Logic will be able to solve even the most complicated puzzles. You will be very proud, and thus susceptible to intellectual flattery, for those blinded by their own brilliance often miss important clues. With low levels of logic, you're going to have a hard time solving the simplest of puzzles, even if you find the pieces. Good luck putting them together. Whoa, okay, so so I'm guessing that's really cool. So everything has like a bonus to it, but you also have a negative side to it as well. I'm gonna look through these and decide which ones I want for each set and then read those off to you guys so that I'm not reading through every single one of them on camera. Oh, so you can only choose one. No! I think I'm gonna go with empathy. Um, I didn't really look through most of them. Empathy. Cool for judges of characters, interviewers, interrogators. Empathy breaks into the souls of others and forces you to feel what's inside. It enables you to notice social cues others may miss, perhaps a hidden sadness you could coax out a little more, a strange joy from someone who should be ber bereaved, or a hidden resentment that could return to your harm later. At high levels, empathy really puts you in other people's shoes. You'll cry for their sorrows, punch walls to relieve their angers, and be even... An even more unstable cop. With low empathy, however, you will be ungainly beast, unable to talk to anyone without upsetting them. I like it. I'm going with empathy. I want to be a, a nice person. Kind of. <laughs> this is kind of scary, but exciting. There were a lot more things. The Furies are at home in the mirror. It is their address. Even the clearest waters, if deep enough, can drown. <laughs> there is nothing. Whoa. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ancient reptilian brain. Ever. Oh. Never. Ever. Ah. Uh. So I assume the white thing, it, oh, <laughs> the white text is what I'm picking. Never ever ever. Simply keep on non-existing. Never ever ever. 
Never, ever, ever, baby. <laughs> Simply keep on not existing. Any idea how time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. This is great. <laughs> Give me some more. What was that about X something? Uh. An awareness creeps up on you. A mass system hidden in your dead angle, soaking in some lurid acidic sauce. It's bloated and shameful. A pool of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. Plunge back into the fathomless deep. No, I wanted to know about the X-something. Yeah, keep pushing him. X-tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of pelagic zone. Alonzi, never let me go. No, I want to get off now. I like pain and burning light and wanting things from people who don't want to give them to me. Do you really? Don't be naive. Of course not. I want to sail the inky blackness until forever ends. I do. Let me off. You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why'd you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much of yourself. Could have been carried away, did we, Chef? Fear and apprehension. You should ask us out there first. Inland Empire. So who's talking right now? <laughs> Are these different factions? Different parts of my brain? I have no idea. Wait, I did this to myself? Tell me, what's waiting for me? I don't care, I'm an idiot. A brave idiot. Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. <laughs> so, in a way, this almost seems like someone bargaining to stay alive and not commit suicide. That's how I kind of see it, because on one hand he can escape everything into this darkness and never have to feel anything again, or he can keep living and come back to the world and risk getting hurt again, but also risk living a happy life. I don't know, maybe I'm looking into it far too deep, but that's just how it seems to me. You can take it. You're a champion. Mother, help me. There's a head attached to my neck and I'm in it. Please, no. I've changed my mind. Take me back to the formless, disembodied nothing. No, I'm not scared. I am a champion. I'll be confident. Stench of liquor rises from your mouth, and with it, an ungodly headache. Help someone cut my head off. It's trying to murder the rest of me. Who am I? What sort of creature does this to their own mouth? Okay, I'm a bit scared now. Let's go back to the dark. This is crazy. Who am a I? fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. It's a cold from hell. Maybe it's just my alarm. Oh. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, what a looker. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm looking. I can turn my head. So I can't. Oh, I can move. Oh. How about we put some pants on, eh, buddy? So, here I am. What does this do? Whoa. Okay. I wonder if I can earn more points and skill points. 
Yeah. Okay, so it already shows that I have one click on empathy. So I can keep keep that up. But we take a shower. Oh, oh, pants. Wait, what? Oh. Okay. Looks like this I have fan has two oh. chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. <laughs> horrific necktie. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. Um, not sure what this mean- what this word means. Uh, sev- sevoir? Is that how you say it? <laughs> Probably not. Sevoir? No? I don't know. It could be anything. Uh, even 58%. This is a white check. You may rely on it. You may retry it. Always loses, always wins. What does that mean? I'm so confused. Uh, grab the tie. You swoop up and catch the tie. Oh. Snap. It's released from the blade. Warning, warning. The necktie is no longer contained. <laughs> okay, so it seems to be there's a bunch of different omnipresence narrators here. Um, Inland Empire. I'm wondering if maybe this uh, detective is a bit... Um, not all there and he uh has different voices in his head i'm not sure what you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie with four or five different patterns the knot reminds you of a noose and he's obviously suicidal pull on the fan pull on the light bulb leave a terrible mistake turn the lights off immediately you can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. <laughs> Bring it on. Your eyes burn. Ah, uh, shit. No sensitivity. It's not <laughs> good. Okay. Okay. The lights. There we go. Are off again. Okay. So I, I shouldn't challenge fate. Um, this is what I've noticed. Let's put on some pants. Nice. Flare cut trousers. That's how you know this is British, because they say trous trousers. What does this mean on top of my head? Is that my house? Whoa! Whoa, okay. Wow, that is quite the tie. They weren't kidding when they said it was horrifically ugly. Horrific necktie. <laughs> Plus one. Inland Empire. Vivid imagination. Okay. The necktie is adorned with a garnish pattern. It is disturbingly vivid. Somehow you feel as if it would be wrong to ever take it off. It's your friend now. You will betray it if you change it for some boring scarf. <laughs> okay. Pants. Tight around the thighs, tight around the crotch. These golden brown trousers are flare cut. Normal belt bottom trousers would be boot cut, but these are far from normal. They are someone's piss soaked gum stained party pants. <laughs> Okay! Interesting. Wait a minute. Keys. Do I have a key? I don't. I don't think I do. Let's put that on. I don't have an undershirt, do I? Oh, no, I think I do. Jacket. No, I don't! <laughs> Look at that mug of my ugly hairy chest. God. Disco ass blazer. <laughs> Halogen watermarks. Looks like someone skinned this blazer off some extinct, long extinct disco animal. It has an enig enigmatic white rectangle on the back of the on the back and the right sleeve. How odd. I can't freaking speak. What's that? There's a like broken window. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. Uh. Okay, so is this like my my chance of things going well? Assess the damage. What do you mean? What? Assess the damage. How would you do that? What are you even trying to do? 
I don't know. You told me. Locked. Okay. The well, morning yeah. light hurts your eyes. It's hazy, but you see the ocean and some war-torn buildings. Okay. Let's leave. What is that above my head? You hear a jingle. Oh. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. Oh. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There aluminium. <laughs> key ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. Perception. Okay, well, I already looked at the ceiling fan. The fan is spinning. Pull on the, the fan. The blades come squeaking to a halt. Okay, cool. Some booze. Oh, wait, what did I just do? Oh. Empty cassette case. Um. Items. Oh, price. 50 cents. <laughs> 50 cents. There used to be a tape in this case, but it was destroyed in a fit of rage. Something about the... Edeneers? No, I don't think so. Single smallest church in Saint... I don't know how to pronounce any of these words. Must have rubbed someone the wrong way. The label says the song was recorded in 43. What's this? This reel-to-reel -reel tape player is still on, rolling empty. Looks like someone tore out the tape while the song was playing. Oh, wow flew him into a fit of rage whatever was playing on that tape this magnum size bottle of Commodore Red is empty yeah, I think I had a little too much fun last night that's what I think but we take a bath while oh, the water's running can I a mirror hangs oh. above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has <laughs> ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Really? Nothing? Wipe the mirror. No way, I'm not doing this. Back off. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. What? You won't like what you see there. And you will never unbecome it. I don't care. Still wiped a mirror. Better not know. Maybe I should touch it first. Make sure there's nothing wrong with my face. Yeah. There is definitely something wrong with it. What? What's wrong? How bad could it be? Where to even <laughs> begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. I'm sure everything is fine. Touch your nose. At least my tongue is okay. Touch your tongue. I'm scared. I want to stop doing this. Wipe the mirror now. It's not. <laughs> it's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. I'm sure everything is fine. It's not. <laughs> your nose feels like a small Dude. balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. Behold. Oh. <laughs> okay. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Dear Lord, help me. What is this? Of course I do. It's, um, is it some kind of superstar? I think I'm a superstar. Oh, look at the bottom right, or the bottom left comes up with my face. This is the face of a late stage alcoholic. Too late. You clearly have rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? I'm not making it. The face is making itself. I have no idea why it's there. It just is. Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. No, keep making that I face. <laughs> It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face, and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? 
superstardom. God, I don't know. It's indescribable. I think it's supposed to look like suggestive. I'm afraid it's meant for the ladies. <laughs> I'm insinuating that I'm vaguely sympathetic. I think I'm sort of pulling it off too in a sad has been kind of way. There's some, oh, I'm pulling it off too in a sad has been kind of way. There's some charm to it. It's an expression of pain. You are correct. Oh. Oh. Okay. Encyclopedia, formidable. Dig deep into the mind to locate the source of the expression. Electrochemistry, attempt to stop the expression from happening. Oh. It belongs in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate, uncontested way of life for our species. Okay. <laughs> this is actually really interesting. Um, so there's different options you can choose, and there's like a probability of success depending on what you choose. Okay, so... So there was a revolution, but it failed, and everything is kind of collapsed. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne-tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. Disco Elysium? For Revachol, your city, that meant only one thing. Guillaume La Million. Revachol. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music, in an open air, what de Nuit, somewhere in Revachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit. Then he made the expression. So I'm copying the expression? So I adopted it? Why? I feel the need to add a clicking sound when I make it click, click. Oh, like he's clicking his tongue. How long ago was the new? Anything else? Like, who am I? Why did I drink myself into oblivion? I guess that's it then. Conclude. Um. You have some understanding of the recent history of disco. The rest is darkness. Okay, so I don't remember anything except for the disco? Click, click. The click <laughs> is used to spur on a horse. It also features oh. heavily in Guillaume Le Million's regional mega hit, Don't Worry, Your Pretty Little Head. <laughs> I like how intimidating his voice is, but he's not really saying anything scary. Oh, why did I adopt Everyone it? loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. How long goes the news? Some 20 odd years. There is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression looking good on you or anyone. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. So basically he's saying no one smiles anymore <laughs> and the expression is, is no more. And everyone was kind of like, wow, look at that. What is he doing with his face? Cause no one ever smiles. Okay. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. Impossible. Attempt the expression from happening. Yeah, I doubt this will happen. It's too late. Yeah. Like an image on film. The expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. Let the mirror be for now. Wow, so there's no way for me to stop smiling? Oh, creepy. But I don't look like I'm smiling. Put on that shirt. Stained white shirt. Nice. I have clothes. White satin shirt. This white satin shirt used to be fancy. It used to really catch the light. Now it smells like someone took a piss in the armpits. <laughs> Conceptualization. A real statement to wear. Suggestion. Unsavory odor. Okay. 
So there's like bonuses and um not bonuses. Wow, there are some those are some tight pants, dude. You see the bottle in the bathtub, wine, beer, and sweet liquors. Is that how you spell liquors? Wait, what? Eh. What is this? Is this a door? Um, is it locked? How do I use that key that I got? Uh, I don't think I can use it there, so... Um, time to get my day started, I think. I imagine. Is this a little hat? What is this? Oh, shoes! Nice! Oh, left one. <laughs> I only have one shoe? Come on, dude. Oh, that's horrid. This green crocodile leather shoe has a high heel and chrome embellishments. It fits your left foot perfectly. Now all that remains is to find the other shoe. Yes, it would seem so. Come on, man. How did you even lose the other shoe? Aren't we gonna turn off that faucet? Your water bill is gonna be really high. That's what I'm concerned about. Okay, well, I can't open that door, obviously. <laughs> no, I don't know how to pronounce anything French at all. Wow. Okay, whatever happened to something something who with his amber mane and sparkling teeth beguiled the tattered remains of the nation? But you suffered and suffered, did he de dematerialize in a cloud of cocaine dust, or did he simply stand in the corner and melt into the slundering new lines of some starlet? Uh, he said it like two minutes ago and I already forgot. Something 20 years ago, Spira thought for his great ass too. What? Spira thought for his great ass too. Or wait, maybe he became a police officer in Revachol West. Hmm. Thought cabinet. Sort thoughts. Oh man, that's weird. That's really cool though. Broken window. Acquire a copy of city map. Tasks. Officer profile incomplete. Okay. Alright. Well. Looks like we can leave through here. But probably not without my other shoe, right? Oh, I guess not. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, cool! I'm finally walking around. Okay. There's something on the table. Low do. <laughs> I don't know. Reservation. Negative 22 degrees. What is it? Sure. Money gained. Some breaks and starbursts. Oh, oh, is that the radio? Can we look out the window here? Hello, world. Oh, can't put more points in a skill. Drugs raise learning caps, but they're bad for your health. <laughs> I like how that's an asterisk. Oh, it's a loading screen. I'm so dumb. I can hear distant music and I like it. Whoa. Whirling go in. Is that my shoe? It's my shoe! What's this? Gust of briny wind washes over you. Yay! My shoe! Okay. Snake skin shoes. Composure. Awesome watchtower heels. Heels ridiculously high. <laughs> they may have lost some of their luster over the years, but these green crocodile leather shoes fit you perfectly. Can you all tell that I can't read worth shit? Um. So there they both oh. are. Two identical shoes. Both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin. Reunited on your feet. Secret task complete. Find your other shoe. Like two baby crocodiles. <laughs> Discard thought. How do they fit? Good. They're balanced. Healed morale. Feels like the only good thing about you right now. Truth be told. So my composure has went up. The smell of the sea makes you dizzy. 
Let's go inside then. So that must be the outside of the building that we're in right now. Most people settle for bed after 21 hours. We're not long after at the night. The streets are emptier by... Oh. Hi. Hello, officer. How are ya? The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. And that art is so cool. How do you say that? Class... No. Miss Orange, disco dancer. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Her eyes are brown and her face is speckled with birthmarks. She can't be more than 28. Officer, am I a military personnel? Oh, am I asking her questions because I just, I don't know anything about myself. Turn your bloated face away from her beauty and just keep on walking. <laughs> um. Uh, no. She seems perplexed by your question. There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. Then why did you call me an officer? Because I'm a detective. Wait, I know. I'm a businessman. Chief executive officer, right? Because you're a police officer, sir. Are you sure? You're shitting me. Goddamn right, I'm a policeman, and I don't, and don't you forget it. <laughs> Do I have amnesia? Uh, are you sure? I am, yes. Unless you've been feeding us a set of very well-rehearsed lies all this time. All this time? You've been here for three days on official police business, no less. And what business is that? I couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. <laughs> yeah. Why don't I remember being a cop or anything else? When the right mind would let me be an officer of the law. Suggestion. Challenging. Try the expression on her. Let her know you want her physically. This is a red check. It cannot be retried. Oh, so... Okay. That's interesting. So if I do it, then I won't have a chance to do it again. Let's not do that. Um. <laughs> Could it be because of the drinking? She raises an eyebrow. The cigarette sizzles. Probably, yeah. <laughs> um, I should get going now. Of course. Be careful, officer. They don't like the police around here. Okay. Something stirs in you as she's about to go. Call it an instinct, a need. The need to Reaction ask speed. questions. It's like you said the words a million times before. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. What if I don't want to ask questions? Before you go, I have some questions for you. Yes. What is it that they have against police here? Where exactly is here? Where am I? Tell me what year it is. Your room is almost... Next to mine. Did you hear anything last night? Okay, you can go now. Uh, what do they have against the police here? Exactly is here. Where am You're I? You're in a hostel, sir. No, where are we? Where in the world? We are in Revachol. Okay. Revachol is the disgraced former capital of the world, divided into zones of control under foreign occupation. Half a century after a failed world revolution, she is central to our moment in time. Should that mean something to me? Revishol forever. How about you tell me something else instead? Yeah? Those words, tell me something else, feel like something you've said innumerable times before. Your mouth is the very shape of them. Okay, uh, what is it they have against police here? The dock workers are pretty cocky. They think they're police enough. At least here on the coast. I can't say about the rest of the city. Clage, is that how you say her name? Probably not. Um, dock workers are, workers are pretty cocky. Okay. Um, did you hear anything last night? There was the usual ruckus. Loud disco music. <laughs> was it from my play? Oh, I wonder if that was from the cassette that we ripped to shreds. Did I have any visitors? I couldn't say. It's impossible to hear people speaking from over here. She nods towards room three. Loud disco music? Oh, yes. Various artists. Ostentatious orchestration prime among them. She raises an eyebrow, waiting for the name to connect with you. 
OO were huge where I come from. I was very young then, of course, like seven. Life gets hard, but we go on. <laughs> yeah, we go on, all right. It mostly just gets hard, doesn't it? Yeah, we go on, all right. I don't know about that. At around two o'clock, the disco stopped, and there was a change of pace. What happened? A slow, sad song started playing, like organ music on repeat. That went on for quite a while. Some of the time you were yelling along to it. Was I singing this? Show her the empty case of the smallest church in St. Sans. San? San? Something? What was I singing? I've heard enough. Uh. Yes, there was a church in there. A really small church. Like the smallest, saddest church in the whole world. It was about that. And also... What else? That it doesn't matter anymore and that we're alone now. It was difficult to tell. She's being... The song <laughs> itself is very quiet and soft, but you sounded like a winded boar, sir. It was hard to understand what you were singing on top of it. <laughs> She's being very patient with me. I like her. I'm sorry. When would you say wounded? Do you... When you say wounded, do you mean that in a cool way? Like a wild beast? Then what happened? Then what happened? Then you started screaming and trashed the place. Are you sure I wasn't being assaulted? That's so me. What did I do? You're making this up. I would never behave like that. Uh, are you sure I wasn't being assaulted? No. It didn't sound like there was a fight. It sounded like someone was trashing their room. A window was smashed. The tape player, probably. The song stopped. And furniture, too. A real destructathon. There was screaming. Then I think uh, you passed out. Was there anything else? Please tell me there wasn't anything else. It prized me to hear this. Tell me there was more. Or I've heard enough. Uh, please tell me there wasn't anything else. <laughs> there was. I think you screamed that you didn't want to be this type of animal anymore. I may have misheard, but it was sort of memorable. I went out afterwards. Everything was quiet by then. Around four or five. And that was it. She's got a very peaceful voice. Tell me what year it is. It's 51. What century? The current century. And that's what? What number? Centuries don't have numbers. <laughs> they have names. And this is the current one. How many centuries have there been, then? Civilization has existed for 8,000 years, sir. She grins. What's so funny? You're right. There is nothing funny about civilization. Okay, you can go now. Glad to have been of assistance. <laughs> All right. Very interesting. I do like her. Eh. Looks like she left a nice long stub in the ashtray. It's still smoking. Eh. The calendar says it's March. The year is 51. All right. Okay. <laughs> The door is closed. Uh, she just went in. Maybe I should just leave her alone. Let's just leave her alone. She's already answered a lot of my questions. This is a weekend edition of the satirical newspaper Trompe le Mon... Mon? I don't know how to pronounce any French words at all. Please forgive me, guys. Okay. <laughs> so what it seems like is that we were listening to disco music and then we switched the song to another like sad slow song and then we became extremely outraged and trashed the place. Hmm. And then somehow woke up and we didn't remember anything. It's very odd. I'm wondering if maybe we tried to commit suicide that's what it seemed like in the beginning. I don't really know. Oh, shit. Let's do some disco dancing. Hell yeah. What's this? Summer door closed for the winter. It's winter, huh? I like the music. Bottle of rum has been knocked over. Beautiful dark liquid is spilling out. Hi. What's up? Whoa. Sleeping dock worker. A man is sleeping at the table wearing mud cake boots and rolled down overalls. The back of his shirt reads, 
Wild pines encircled by a logo with a tree. On the counter rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. Pick up the pills. Physical instrument. Challenging. Wake him up. Pick up the pills? The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. Item game. Magnesium. Okay. Uh, let's not try to wake him up then, because that probably wouldn't work. Hi. What's up? Kim Kitsusagi? What? Kitsur... Kitsuragi. Kitsuragi? Let's just call him Kim. <laughs> A bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? Hold on, who is he to me? Shake his hand, don't shake his hand. Hold on, who is he to he me? He is your half-brother. Oh, shake his hand. <laughs> Hello. I'm Kim Kitsuragi. Kitsuragi, okay. Prison 57. You must be from the 41st. Oh, wait. Is this him? Does he not know who I am? You realize he is waiting for your name. So he doesn't know who I am. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. <laughs> Conceptualize. Uh, invent a name for yourself. Concentration <laughs> makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon, but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it, but there are still many to go. It is not yet time. I really don't know my name. I don't really know my name. Say nothing. It is not yet time. I don't know what that means, okay, but... Okay, then. He processes the information that disregards it. The yeah, I would like too. We had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? You mean that guy? Not toward the man behind the counter. I totally talked to him. No, I haven't. Must be some kind of misunderstanding. You're taking me for someone else. Um. Uh, no, I haven't. Then we should ask him for a rundown of the area. Get me up to speed. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Yes, the police. I'm aware I'm a policeman. <laughs> what interviews? I have, yes. I haven't. Uh... What interviews? At the 57th, we like to prepare an initial list of persons of interest, and then just skim the surface. Prepare the field, get to know the players. You don't do that? Maybe it's not an inter-district practice. Uh, I haven't. Okay, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Ugh, dead body? I don't like dead bodies. Look, man, you know, yeah. <laughs> no, completely. Um, <laughs> these options are pretty funny. No. So, the body is still in the tree. Yeah. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be <laughs> in the tree. I think that's obvious. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. I like this guy. What if I told you I'm not really a police officer? How can you be so sure I'm from the police? But I can't remember anything. What were we supposed to do again? Let's get going then. Move on. Uh, how can you be sure I'm from the police? I was sent here to meet a detective from Precinct 41. You have the insignia of the citizen's militia on your sleeve and on your back. He points to your jacket. I suppose you could be impersonating him. You could have gotten the insignia from the black market or forged it. But for now, I'm going to set those possibilities aside. I'm not from the Inspectorate General. So these people are all French, huh? He has a French accent, right? Uh, Inspectorate General? You said insignia, these white rectangles, you mean? Point to you, sleep. Yes. But they're just white rectangles. They're not just white rectangles. 
They bear a halogen watermark with the letters RCM and a pattern resembling the street grid of Revachol West. I would okay. ask you to step into the headlights of my motor carriage, but again, it's none of my concern. Motor I just carriage. need you to do your job. But shouldn't I have a badge or something? Check your pockets. You mean you don't have a badge? It was not on me when I woke up. Pretend you found it. I have my badge. I'm a policeman and I have my badge. <laughs> it was not on me when I woke Using up. Using your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I would advise you to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Uh... <laughs> okay. Um... What if I told you I'm not really a police officer? We all feel that way sometimes. There is no such thing as a police officer, I'm afraid. What remains is that there is a dead body in the tree. Someone has to figure out who put it there. If we don't, no one else will. But first, we have to take it down. All right, let's After go. After you, officer. Okay. Oh, oh, he's joining me. Test interview cafeteria manager, inspect victim's body. Oh. Oh god, it's auto saving. Oh. So he follows me now. Interesting. Okay. Wow, he is just <laughs> real close. Okay, dude. Interesting. Okay, so welcome aboard, dude. What am I thinking right now? The worker is in a deep slumber. Perhaps he's on his way to where you just came from. Into the primordial darkness. Lieutenant, who is this? No idea. Looks like he works for Wild Pines, the logistics company who owns and operates the harbor. But why is he sleeping during the day? Possibly because there's a strike going on in the harbor. There's not much to do aside from drinking and sleeping. Good point. <laughs> I like how we're just going around judging everyone that, we're, that we meet. Uh... That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? An hour? Two hours? Pretty long. It's drink o'clock. Not now. Uh, two hours? An hour would have been bad. Two hours is mystical. You have truly wiped out all trace of yourself if you haven't thought about rum and lemonade yet. So it's pretty clear I am an alcoholic. <laughs> Actually, should I be thinking about this? Looks like drinking hasn't turned out too well for me. Now that you mention it, I do need rum and lemonade. Isn't that bar over there? Maybe later. Uh, should I be thinking about this? Probably Maybe not. Maybe you haven't turned out well for your drinking. Have you thought about that? Get a goddamn rum and lemonade to yourself, boy. Or better yet, lick that stain off the counter. Don't lick it. What happened, man? You used to be... <laughs> Go get your boring normal person drink then. Get your I will. drink on and your act together. No, I don't want to drink. Dude, obviously, drinking hasn't turned out well for me. The hangover feels really bad. You have to take the edge off, find a bottle of alcohol, put your hand, put it in your hand, equip it in the held slot in your inventory, and the magic will happen by its own. Inspect a victim's body. Inspect a body hanging in the backyard of the whirling in rags. This is a preliminary inspection. You just need to suppress the urge to throw up and approach it. This is this is really cool, actually. I'm a detective that doesn't know what the hell I'm doing, but everyone's looking at me like I do. The cafeteria manager in the whirling in rags might know something about the murder that happened in the yard. Ask him about it. Report your badge missing. You need to report your missing badge to the forty one the forty first precinct. As soon as possible. The lieutenant said that you can use the radio in his motor car to call your station. Active. Find your other ship. Oh, okay. Okay. I understand. Kind of. Okay. That's, I'm stuck there. <laughs> I'd also like to point out how cool it is. Um, he always puts his hands behind his back whenever he goes into his stance. Okay. Hello, lady. Hello, sweetie. Lena, or Lena, the cryptozoolo cryptozoologist's wife? The elderly woman turns to you with a smile. Wait, who's sweetie? Does that mean you like me? What? 
Dude, this guy does not know how to speak to people. Who's sweetie? Why, you are, officer. I'm no sweetie. Look at me. Hmm, maybe I am. And have you found anyone to be sweet to? She smiles conspirit conspiratorially. No, I'm done with mating rituals this time around. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I have. Oh, I had once. Wink twice. But then I lost her. I really don't want to talk about that right now. <laughs> um, I'm not going to hit on her. I'm just going to say I don't really I'm want to talk about that. I'm sorry if I was being overly familiar. I, I know we've only just met. You That's must okay. forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. Well, so did I, so that's okay. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. Her eyes glitter over the rims of her glasses as she looks up, smiling. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley Crew. Hire her on the spot. <laughs> what? You seem to be in a chair. What? How'd you like to roll with me? I don't know if you noticed, but I don't know where I am or what I'm doing or anything. I've got to get going now. <laughs> Leave. Dude. What? This guy does not know what the hell he's doing. He doesn't even know how to speak to people. Hire her on the spot. You seem to be in a chair. I'm going to ask it even though it's a really fucking stupid question. Yes, dear. Uh, I'm a paraplegic. A paraplegic is someone with limited or no ability to use the lower half of their body. Paraplegia is caused by spinal cord injuries, like falling from a great height, or a grenade explosion. Hmm, a grenade? Did you fight in a war? I'm sorry, it was rude of me to mention the wheelchair. Let's move on. Thanks for clearing that up for me. Let's move on. Uh, that was rude of That's me. That's quite alright. I'm used to people asking questions. I know they're thinking about it anyway. There is no bitterness in her voice. She accepted the curiosity her condition inspires a long time ago. <clears throat> uh, empathy, medium success. I don't know where I am or what I'm doing or anything. Uh, I've got to get of going course, now. dear. Good luck with your case. She gives you a small wave. Thanks. What's this? This royal pinball machine is unplugged. Well... I'd like to plug it in so I can play. So this sign reads, Mess Hall res reserved for union members. Doors open at 1600. Hey, Kim, wanna sing with me? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> where am I going? This is where the lyrics would be. Big ol' karaoke mic just waiting for someone to sing into it. Uh, yes sir, that's why I wanted to touch it. Oh, I can't look at it again! <clears throat> the speaker is connected to the radio. The music is seasoned with static. Okay. Uh, what's this? Human game. NASA fed. What's this? This is a water cooler. A large bubble is rising to the surface. The soft pro of an electric juicer comes from the kitchen. Some of this working. Let's look at the menu. Whoa, excuse me, Kim. The menu has been wiped clean. Only the word Monday is written on it. Alright, well, I, I... Whoa. You should totally sing karaoke here. The first <laughs> chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. My soul is immense. My soul is modest. It's normal size. My soul is puny. My soul's cubic content is obscured by the hangover. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my soul is modest. It's normal exactly. size. Exactly. It's measured, level-headed, and it needs to be heard through a PA system by other people. <laughs> what should I sing when it comes to you it? You should sing the sad small church song from that tape you found. Thought it was obvious. Of course, they'll really get a gauge on my soul with that one. I was thinking maybe I could sing something happy, like from those ostentatious orchest orchestration folks. No, no. Don't sing the happy song. It's stupid. Sing the sad song. 
It's profound. You would need no. another copy of the tape first, though. The one upstairs is destroyed. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't want to sing that song. I want to sing the other one, the happy one. Excuse me. Let's go upstairs. I wonder if we can bring Kim back to my room. <laughs> don't be scared, Kim. Need to do something behind Lieutenant Kitsuragi's back. Sneak out after he's gone to sleep. What? Oh, that makes sense, actually. So there is sort of a, a time period where people do go to sleep and then I can get away with more. But, I mean, it's kind of obvious. I'm going to play the good cop. That's usually what I do in games. I like to do the good run um, first before I do anything else. Come on in, Lieutenant. Kim tries not to look at your broken down bathroom door. Kim also tries not to look at the pile of tape viscera on the carpet or the weird suitcase on the hat rack or the potted plant dying in the corner. But it's all just too morbid to ignore. You're looking at the destruction? I'm sorry for this. I did it my way. This is where the magic happens. I am sure. Say nothing, not stoically. I'm sorry no for No problem, this. officer. He takes a step to the door like he'd try- like to leave. Understandable. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. No time to rest yet. Makes sense. I just want to see all the, the different- The stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. Okay. So, since I failed that one earlier, I can't really do it again. Hey, Kim, can you help me break down the door? What's in there? Sing karaoke. You need to find a sufficiently tragic tape, then play it on a boombox to memorize the lyrics, then ask the cafeteria manager to perform. Preferably in the evening, more people at the bar then. Get a hold of a sad song on tape. But I want a happy song. Okay. Hi, Kim. Do you want to talk about this? Uh, yes. I think you should know that I can't remember anything. Um, I want to talk to you. I want to talk about you. You seem to be following me. Uh, okay, um... I think you should know that I can't remember anything. No response. He arches his brow. I feel like I must repeat this. I don't remember anything. There was heavy drinking involved. Have you tried concentrating on something other than your personal affairs? There is a sudden, harsh edge to his voice. Like he's tired of hearing about your personal affairs. What's wrong with personal affairs? So, what should I concentrate on? But I'm completely lacking in basic information about even this organization we're in. Can you help me? I'm afraid this is a metal, medical situation. Move on. We're fine. Let it be. Ugh. Fine. We should get through this day first. Off hours begin at 9 p.m. If you're still having trouble then, I can give you an orientation. Thank you. Focus on other people's troubles, not your own. That is a relief. Um, okay. Uh, tell me about the case. I think you should know. Uh, nothing. Let's go downstairs. We'll talk to him later. Oh, actually, can we talk to this girl with him? Hey, girl. <laughs> Hello. The door is closed. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on. Somewhere inside. Perception. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. I'm so alone. Why are you doing this? Don't do this to me. Beauty, don't abandon me in all this ugliness. Swallow the emotion. Just... The door is closed. Yeah, just leave. <laughs> Don't bother her. Again. Okay, let's go back downstairs and try to interview the bartender guy. I will just say the voice acting is really, really good. I honestly can't really imagine this game without voice acting in it. It's kind of crazy how much it changes the game. Like if I just muted it, <laughs> because whenever they don't say the lines, it's always kind of like you're waiting for them to. I don't know. It's it's very well done. 
very much enjoying this game so far. Hi. Garte, the cafeteria manager, a man in his late 20s with a thin, unimpressive beard, notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Could he be irritated with you? He avoids eye contact altogether, like you're not even there. I'm wondering if maybe I did something uh, <laughs> to upset him in the bar. Mr. Gart, right? Gart. You run this place. Oh. The lieutenant glances into his little notebook. Okay. I don't think I can uh, read the dialogue before he says the next thing. Yes. He responds tersely. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. This is an inter-district investigation, so joining me from Precinct 41. He looks to you, realizing he still doesn't know your name. The Harbinger of Ruin. What is golden orange like a forest fire but smells like liquor? <laughs> I'm currently in between names. <laughs> Can I have a drink? Say nothing. Right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report a dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Okay. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. He looks behind a pile of coasters, finds a slip of paper, and hands it to the lieutenant. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No. I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. He seems suspicious, don't he? But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. Okay. I didn't imply that. Detective. Who, me? <laughs> uh, yes. I have everything. You? Oh, you, you mean do I have questions? Ask them. No, I'm good. Pass on the questions. Uh, ask them. Yes, yes. He means, do you have questions for me, like a police officer would? The cafeteria manager is clearly agitated again. Who killed him? <laughs> what is your problem with me? <laughs> you know, I actually can't think of a single thing. Uh, where exactly is the body? Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. And how do we get there, then? That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that, then to your right you should see a big hole in the fence, a really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys, the hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. Does he want you to feel guilty of making that hole? It's implied in his voice. Oh. I definitely did something. Why did Sylvie go away? She went away because none of your business. Fine. Extra fine. Are you the bartender? What's your problem with me? <laughs> Why would I have a problem with you? You're a hero, cop. So not only am I a cop, but I'm also a hero? You're being sarcastic. Am I? What did you ride in? Take the body down, solve the murder, and not trash my hostel room? Ah, uh, the dead body. I didn't actually get it down, did I? Oh my god, I did all those things? I do not appreciate your tone. This is in no way... Talk to an officer who trashed your hostel room. Yeah, he's kind of got a point there. Uh, oh my god, I did all those things? No, you see, actually, you didn't. You haven't done anything even remotely useful since you got here. What have I been doing here, then? Have you seen me around? No, I haven't seen you around. I just got here, remember? Was there anything else? He looks at you, then the attendant. Lieutenant, okay. Are you the bartender? <laughs> no, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. He's very animated all of a sudden. This is clearly a touchy subject for him. But you can still pour me a drink, right? You look like a bartender. What's the difference? I have three cafeterias I manage. Three. Get over it. This is such a stupid question, but who killed him? I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. I have other questions. 
Uh, uh, that's all. Let's go. Okay. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. Uh. No one is saying the multi-pattern necktie you found tied to the ceiling fan can talk. No one. It must be merely imagination. But. What's real? Slip away unnoticed. I don't know you shit. What's real? Oh, excuse me. You owe me 130 real. Oh. He pronounces with the R. He pronounces the R with a mock aristocratic accent. The IIR, or Interisolary Real, is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. Oh, I understand. You mean I owe you money. Wow, you're a genius. <laughs> yes, that's right. Money. You owe this establishment 130 real. He points to the red ledger on the counter. Uh, did I just hear my tie speak to me? <laughs> Horrific necktie. Who does that clown think he is? Arrest him. <laughs> did I just hear my tie speak to me twice? What do I owe this place for? What exactly is money? You're under arrest. <laughs> what do I owe this place? <laughs> Let's see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. That will be 40 real in damages. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually, more, but we'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revishal. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And yes, real is still money. Can I just leave? I don't want to say you're under arrest. What exactly is- What are you, a philosopher? <laughs> no, I'm just getting my bearings. Since I woke up, I've been- I've had trouble remembering even the most basic concepts of reality. Money is what grown-up people use to pay for things. Things like this hostel room or- or eight bottles of potent blend and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. Uh, interesting. Where do I get it from? Why do I need it? Proceed and show him the coins you found. Is this money? Proceed, but don't show him the coins. They're yours. Mm. Where do I get it from? Are you serious? <laughs> from your work? I don't know. You can take bribes, I guess. I'm sorry. I don't think cops can take bribes. <laughs> Some do take recompense, but only to survive. Lieutenant is dead serious. Uh, show the money. Yes, it is. Count them and give them to him. That's 10 plus 10 plus 20 equals 40. Now I'm down to 90, right? No, you see, that's 40 cents. Cents are a form of currency 100 times yeah. smaller than the real. But that's... I'm not even going to take this. Come back when you have 130 real. But you did take it. That's horrible. <laughs> 100 times smaller? Okay. The cafeteria manager stands silently looking at the coppers on the counter before him. Isn't it evil? The order of magnitude between what is asked of a person and what they have? Darkness rides. Pick up the coins. Keep it to yourself. Pick up the coins. There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kim looks for something in the pockets, pockets of his orange bomber. That's cop four. I haven't offered to pay because I don't have any money either. What happens now? I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... He shrugs. Officer. Maybe you are better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. Isn't there somewhere else I can stay around here? I don't have a home. I don't remember where my home is. Fuck this place. I'll take my chances on the streets. I'll see what I can do. Uh, I don't remember where my home is. Officer, you really need to take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car. Call them. Ask for assistance. We have to get this investigation started now. Understandable. Good luck. This man wants to say something, but thinks better of it. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's fair. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. I don't really remember. 
I really don't. But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. I don't know. Near? South, maybe. Far away. Up on Marvel Hill. Uh, Marvel Hill? Why did you say that? These are just synapses firing. It doesn't mean anything. And they must have some meaning for me. Lieutenant Kitsuragi, do you know a place called Marvel Hill? No. But isn't that an expression, not a place? Expression? A saying. Up on Marvel Hill. A great high place. One that is impossible to climb back to. Huh. That doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. Could I trace my the way back somehow to the exact street, the exact number of the building? I'll live in a dumpster. I don't care. Fuck everything. Hobo cop. <laughs> Could I trace it back the way back somehow? You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. Interesting. Okay. Oh, wow. End of the day debrief with Kim. Kim can answer any lingering questions you may have about the case and the RCM. Join him on the whirling in Rags balcony after 22 when you're calling it a day. Who made the call reporting the crime? Someone reporting the hanging in the RCM. Maybe if you find out who it was, it may shed new light on the events. If you have an idea where to start, you have an idea where to start, but the caller could have been anyone. Call Sylvie using Kim's shortwave to ask her whether she made the call. Pay for damages. You need to pay for the damages you caused in the whirling and rags, or you won't have a place to stay tonight. Ask around for money and be careful with your spending. If you're unsure how much you owe, ask Garte. Gart. Gart. What's his name? Ask your station for additional funds. Alright. I don't know, there's tons of different things I can do right now. Hey, what's up? Uh, I want to talk about you. Me? Yes, you. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Um, let's see. Come on, Lieutenant, open up a little. You're right. What's there to note about a lame... Oh, that's so mean. Uh... Hmm, that's a fair point. All right, for the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? You're wearing glasses. <laughs> you don't look like other people around here. Tell me a secret about yourself. Do you ever talk with yourself? That's all for now. Uh, um, um. That's because I'm half Seolite, or quarter. My father's father was from Seoul. So was my grandmother, but from my mother's side. It's not an interesting topic. What's Seoul? It's a part of the world, officer. A geopolitical entity and a geographic division. I told you it wouldn't be interesting. Okay, I guess it's not interesting then. You're only making it sound uninteresting. I still want to know more about... So. You're barking at the wrong tree. I don't speak a word of Seolite. I've never met either one of my grandparents, and I've never been to Seol. I'm a regular Revachelier. He's glad to have shut down your question. Well, <laughs> uh, you're wearing glasses. That's correct. <laughs> you feel a slight urge to put the lieutenant down for this, but you can't quite muster enough testosterone. Just observing. No, I don't. Glasses are cool, I guess. <laughs> I guess you don't need glasses, then. Nope. <laughs> uh, that's all for now. Good. Let's change the subject. You seem to be following me. Excuse me? What if I want to work this case alone? Beat it, you're cramping my style. Nothing, just an observation. You have a... a distinctive way of working. If I were to walk in front of you, we would surely collide. What do you mean, distinctive? Uh, let it go. The moment passes. The lieutenant glances at the smart watch on his wrist. Uh, nothing. <laughs> oh, auto save. Nice. I know I should wrap up the episode here because I've already gone on for a while, but I want to. want to still look around, you know. What's this? <laughs> We're just posing together. Okay. The door is bolted. A sign reads: "Kitchen reserved for personnel until." 300. 1300. 300. 300. <laughs> What's out here? Uh, oh. The guy's still there. Can we leave? Don't be afraid to say weird things. People are more forgiving to persons of power, like police officers. They got a good point. Hey, dude. 
Uh, tell me about the case. What do you want to know? Literally anything about it. I can't remember a single thing. Would you say this is a mysterious case? If we're from different precincts, precincts, why are we on the same case? Actually, I have all we need for now. I'm afraid you and I are pawns in a, a pissing competition. <laughs> His disdain is clear. This man would not use such an expression otherwise. <laughs> what do you mean? You don't know? I assumed you were in on it. I don't remember being in on anything. You know what I'm in on. A retrograde amnesia. Tell me about it. That's good. Better still than an imbecilic cup of. Huh. So the two precinct precincts are probably at war with each other to try to solve this, but why would they try to make them work together? Cop off? It's just stupidity. We shouldn't waste any more time on it. <laughs> the pissing If you want my take, ask me after we've inspected the victim. You should tell me now. This seems relevant. Uh, let it go. Was there anything else you wanted to know about the case? Literally anything about it. Maybe you can tell me what you do know to help me narrow it down a bit. I only I know literally nothing about it, only what you've told me before. Do you want me to brief you? Brief, yes, that sounds good. Three days ago, the RCM emergencies desk received a report about a security guard who was found hanged in Martinez. An anonymous caller said there was a dead body behind the whirling in Rags hostel cafeteria. The cadaver had been there for four days. No one had come to investigate. During that time, the victim had been stripped of his belongings. The caller did not identify him, but used the word lynching. There is an ongoing labor dispute between the local dock workers and the logistics company Wild Pines. I was told we should approach the death as part of this dispute. He has such a relaxing voice. I could listen to this guy speak forever. Wait, does the briefing say who the victim was? Why didn't we know anything about the caller? A security guard or worker of some sort hired by Wild Pines. This was just hearsay for Martinez, of course. We need to find out the truth. They didn't identify themselves in any way. The tone was muffled using a device of some sort. The desk could identify neither the caller's age nor sex. Why hide themselves? There's a strong prejudice against involving the RCM in what's seen as union matters. The dock workers' union is the de facto uh. police in Martinez. Now it appears they've started executing too. We cannot allow that. Hold on, and the RCM is? <laughs> Pretty sure that's the police force that I'm a part of, right? Of course, yes, I understand everything now. Let me just make this perfectly clear. Our job here is to find the killer. I still don't understand anything. Uh, and the RCM is? That's us. The Revachol Citizens Militia. Yeah. We're the police in this city. Of course. Just to be clear, we are police officers. It's our job to find the killer. That's the case. Uncover and arrest the killer. Can we go over the preliminary info again? Would you say this is a mysterious case? Actually, I have all I need for now. Good. Okay. Very interesting. Hi. How are you? It's a wheelbarrow. A heap of snow melts in the wheelbarrow. What's this? Street sign reads, fuck the police. Hey, dude, did you write this? By any chance? The RCM in Martinez. She's what cute. can I help you with? The w young woman looks up at you. You sound surprised. I have some questions for you. Of course. What can I help you with? We need directions. What is this fuck the police business? <laughs> Who are you exactly? Me? I am just a gardener. Cool, and what are you doing here? <laughs> Good to meet you, just a gardener. Another question then. I am pleased to meet you too, officer. Need directions. Of course. Where to? Oh, wow. <laughs> where am I? What do you mean? Just tell me where we are, okay? I'm a bit disoriented. This is Ravishol, right? Yes, sir. District of Martinez. She looks around, thinking of what else to this say. This intersection is called Roundabout North. He knows where we are. He just wants directions. Oh, the lieutenant seems uncomfortable with the level of disorientation you are displaying. Uh, what is up north? There's the pier, 
the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements, not a lot really. What is in the east? The harbor gates, some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. She shrugs. A fleet stored. <laughs> Uh, what is in the south? Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. What is on the other side of the canal? Just coast. There's a little fishing village there, and a fish market. But that got closed down ages ago. What is in the west? It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay. But they're hard to reach. Thanks, that's all for now. No problem. She nods, brushing a fleck of soil off her cheek. I have to run. Of course. I won't hold you back. She wipes her brow with a canary yellow glove. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with, after all. More thing. Can I borrow your gloves? Oh, those gloves aren't really my style. Sure. Keep them. I have another pair. <laughs> She hands you the rubber gloves with no visible annoyance. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for the gloves, lady. Very interesting. Okay, I'm going to leave this episode off here. Uh, I am actually really enjoying this so far. I want to know what you guys think because it did take me a little bit to get into it. I kind of felt like it was a slowish start and it still is a slow start. But the more I played, the more I actually really enjoyed myself. And I wasn't expecting to enjoy it so much given the type of game it is. It's very um, exposition heavy and sometimes I get kind of annoyed when I see such a long paragraph of something to read. Um, that is honestly on me. I know a lot of people like that lore heavy stuff. Like a good example would be The Witcher 3. I had a really hard time getting into that game because there was just so much to read and I <laughs> got kind of bored. Um, I do like looking deeper into games, but I kind of like to do it when it's presented in a coherent way. Not really a coherent way, but like an appealing way. Like I like learning about the lore through gameplay instead of just reading a list. You know what I mean? That's kind of what I thought was going on here, but it's actually really cool how they do it. You're playing as this amnesiac, detective who doesn't remember anything about anything. Uh, he doesn't even know what money is. Clearly something went down where he just trashed his whole hotel room, drank himself nearly to death, and I believe almost died before coming back. And, uh, you know, working through it. I wonder what would have happened if I just succumbed to the darkness in the beginning. Like, I wonder if I would have just died and game over? Like, I don't know. There's so many different ways this game can go down. I feel like it's just, it's super interesting. I am beyond grateful that the devs reached out to me and offered to send me the early access codes. It's just a very, very cool experience. And I hope you guys aren't offended by how bad my gameplay was. Overall, the voice acting, really, really good. I really enjoyed um, the different voices and stuff. It made the narrator um, very fun to listen to. I kind of like that my character doesn't have a voice because that gives me an opportunity to flesh out who I want this person to be. Still obviously a bit confused, but it's really cool how they did it where, you know, your character is learning along with you what is going on and, and what you're doing here. And you have to explore the area and talk to all these different people. I really think it started picking up when we met Kim here and he's our partner now and he's just hanging out with us and I really enjoy the dynamic between them where he's just this straight faced you know stone cold detective or lieutenant and uh, doesn't really like to put up with bullshit but he's also very patient with me so that was surprising. I definitely want to play the role of good cop. I want to be as good of a person as I can be in this game. That's usually my goal in every game that I play. I really enjoyed this so far. It definitely has a lot of potential to continue on this channel. If you guys would like to see it, please let me know. I think even if I don't play it on the channel, I'm definitely going to play it on my off time and enjoy it. Um, and also, I'm not even saying this because I want to get on the dev's good side, okay? I did really enjoy this. Hope you enjoyed, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely not the detective that I thought I would be. 
But hey, I got the tie. The tie kind of matches, right? So yes. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like. Please let me know what you think in the comments below if you want me to continue this series because if enough people want me to, I definitely will. So yeah, that is all for this episode. Again, huge thank you to the developers who reached out to me and offered to send me this game because I, like I said, I, I had a great time. I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.